Hey everyone, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. On this fun video tutorial, we're going to talk about what do you do when you don't know what you want to do for a craft and you just feel like using some stuff that you have laying around. So I don't know if you're a good cook or if you're the kind of cook that can just go to the pantry in the kitchen and pull out some stuff that you already have and whip up a fabulous meal. That's definitely not me. But I can go over here to my craft closet that's filled with all kinds of leftovers and doodads and things that have been in there for a year or longer. And I can usually whip something up using stuff that I already have. So today's craft is gonna be, we're gonna make two fun signs using leftovers. Okay, and um, some of the leftovers that we're going to be using today are, we're going to use the inside of one of these stretched canvases, like I showed you guys on Sunday during Christ and Crafting, we made this reverse uh, canvas. So we'll be used, I have, I had one inside piece, the wood, leftover, so we'll be using that. Um, I had a couple of these just little pine crosses from the Dollar Tree that have been in my closet for a long time, so we'll be using a couple of those. We'll be using some leftover painter's drop cloth that I just had here in my cabinet. We'll be using some of my favorite polished hemp leftover string that I had uh, from Walmart. We'll be using a couple of stencils and then I stained everything before I got started. So let's just hop right in as you're joining me. Um, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm going to just quickly put a link here. We will be using uh, two different stencils from Magnolia. And I'm just trying to get those pinned. Pin. Okay. So we'll be using two stencils from Magnolia Design Company and I have a link pinned at the bottom of this page in case you want to go check it out. And um, so let's just jump right in. Which one do we want to do first? I think let's do the one with the drop cloth first. Okay. So this is the inside piece of the frame from that stretch canvas that I had left over from Sunday. And uh, before I got started, I just used some brown stain. You can use whatever you have. You can even create a stain using a little bit of paint and some water. You apply it. I applied my stain today using some of my disinfecting wipes. It's kind of a cool way to apply it and then take it off. I let it dry and um, this is what we have. And then I did press this drop cloth, this painter's drop cloth that I have left over from another project. And we're essentially going to put it on the inside of the frame here. Then we'll stencil, then I'll show you the rest of it. And then I have another sign to do too. So let me find a pen. And basically what we're gonna do is we're just going to trace the, um, Trace around the outside of my frame here and then we'll glue it in and then I'll show you the next step. And so um, there's nothing precise here. I'm just going to draw where the outside of my frame is. This is what that looks like. And then I'll cut it out and then we'll hot glue it on there and then we'll move on to the next step. So. We need to have, for these projects, you need to have some leftover wood something or other. For me, it was the frame part of the inside of one of these stretched canvases. And then I had these wood crosses from Dollar Tree. And I stained those. And then I'm just cutting my leftover bits of painter's drop cloth. And we'll glue that inside the back of this these are the best kind of projects. The projects that you start, I think, where if you don't know where you're going, or what it will ultimately end up looking like, 
Um, that way you have no expectations. And what, however your project turns out, usually you're pretty tickled by it. So, okay, so I'm gonna just start using a little band of hot glue. And I'm using my, oh my goodness, this thing looks terrible. My Sure Bonder Cool Shot Hot Glue Gun. It's a low temperature hot glue gun and it's a really low, low temperature hot glue gun. So it's nice to work with, and I feel like I don't get nearly as many hot glue burns using this, this low temperature hot glue gun. So I'm just laying my painter's drop cloth along one end of it. Put a little bit along each side. I don't know what I'm going to do with this project when it's completed. Um, some days you just want to craft and you don't have anything specific in mind. Uh, and so it's fun to just use what you have. I know I'm always saying that. Use what you have whenever possible. And this is definitely one of those use what you have kind of a crafts. So alternatively, you could, if you wanted, you could um, do your fabric first. You could stencil it however you might want it or decorate it however you might want it first. But I'm going to put attach it to this um, wood frame first. Trying to pull it as tight as I possibly can. I think this is going to have to go a little bit shorter. So today is what the I think it's the 29th of December 2020, and I'm just curious to know. Who still has their Christmas decorations up and who has already gotten started taking those down? We still have ours up, but I'm kind of feeling like I want some of the clutter to disappear in my house. So I kind of think I might take some of my Christmas, like maybe just the tree. I might take that down today. Okay, this is what this looks like so far, and I'm just going to go ahead and do the last bit here across the top. I'm pulling it as tight as I can. Okay, and here's our frame. Now afterwards, I'll trim up like the fringe and stuff that seems to be falling over the edge. I'll do that after. Okay, so like I told you before, I also had one, I had several of these little crosses these little pine crosses from Dollar Tree and so before we went live I um, stained this one the same dark color it's just brown stain you can get it anywhere it can be you know whatever type of wood stain you like or it could be a diluted paint or it could be a gray stain or a black stain um, it's just completely up to you and my thought is that we'll be put sort of gluing it to this piece off to the side after we do our stencil. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do is I want to use this stencil right here that says, prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. This is a great stencil, and it has a couple other great pieces in it. Um, it has also this really nice old-fashioned key. We're not going to use that today. And then it has this old-fashioned lock in it. Um, so we're just using part of it for today's project, but that's a great stencil. And if you want to look at that, um, I did pin a link at the bottom of the page. Okay, so I want to leave room off to the side for my cross. 
So I'm going to put my stencil over here to the side as far as possible. And let's see, how's that going to work? I think that'll be just, if I might move it over just a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to use this really yummy color of chalk paste from Magnolia. It's called Chocolate Brown. And I think it's going to look good with the, the frame. But if you were doing this kind of a project, you could use any color you like. Um, I'm choosing chalk paste because this project, even though it's on fabric on Painter's Drop Call, it's not going to be handled and I'm not going to need to wash it. So there's no reason why I necessarily would have to use their ink which could become permanent on fabric if you heat set it with a hot iron after it was dry. But you can use chalk paste um, on fabric in situations where you're not going to be handling the fabric a lot and you're not going to uh, need to wash it. Okay, so I'm gonna just take my, I always label the back of my um, carrier sheets. I'm gonna take my stencil off here I'm not going to be fuzzing it because it's going on fabric. So it doesn't make sense to fuzz it uh, on fabric and then lay it on fabric. You know what I mean? just kind of want to get a rough idea of where I might want it to sit. I want it to go up a little bit higher. These stencils from Magnolia are green case you're wondering um, and they are super sticky and that is why often I well almost always I fuzz them before I use them a couple of times that makes it so that it's easier to get them off of whatever you put them on and it makes it so that your stencils don't get stretched out as much okay so I'm just using one of their little green squeegees and again some of this chocolate um, chalk paste from Magnolia and I'm too far away to be able to see your comments but as soon as I hop off I will definitely read everything now I get questions all the time about stenciling on um, fabric and how sometimes your whatever your medium is it can bleed on your fabric this drop cloth is pretty thick so I'm not worried about it going through the back end onto my table. But I think the secret is to start with less medium and to try to just mainly go over your project uh, as few times as you need to. Don't keep going over and over and over it because when you do that, your fabric will suck in the medium and then it will sort of spread it out in the fibers of the fabric. So we'll see how this turns out. And then I'm just taking the big globs of my chalk paste off. You can see it really does not require much. And I'm going to be careful not to go out of the edges of the stencil because it's super hard to get a dark colored chalk or ink off of fabric when you go outside of the lines. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Let's just pull up one corner and take a little peek. Wow, if I don't say so myself, this looks fabulous. Okay, I'm gonna throw my stencil upside down in this little tub of water that I have over here. I need a paper towel to wipe my hand off and I'll lift this up and show it to you. Oh, this looks great. Doesn't that look nice? See if 
I can push my desk just a teeny bit closer. What did I just run into? Something. Looks awesome. Okay, so then what I would do is I would just use my hot glue gun to plunk my cross over here off to the side and then after and I'll fiddle around with exactly how I want it can you guys see but after I'm all done then I will use some of this leftover twine that I have this polished hemp from Walmart to do a frame from the back and this is a really simple let me come closer simple super easy to assemble kind of a craft project what do you guys think isn't that cute for saying it was all leftovers there's so many ways that you could jazz this up too if you wanted to um, you could do something cute on the top of your cross which i have done for the other project so stay tuned i'll show you in just a second you could add some vintage buttons you could do some bling. You could Mod Podge some uh, vintage dictionary pages or sheet music on it. You could use all different colors. Um, you could totally make this project into the style that would go with whatever you have going on in your house. But I just wanted to give you this first idea of taking leftovers and making a craft project out of it. So that's the first one. Let me set this over here to the side. And I will come back and finish that off and then I will put pictures in the comments here and also on, uh, on DIY Dreaming Facebook page. Okay, so this is the second project that I wanna show you. This was just a $5 sign from Target in their craft department. My son bought this for me for my birthday. He got me a whole bunch of crafts, various craft supplies last, year, last August. And I hadn't used it yet. So I just did the exact same thing. I took a little dark brown stain and I used one of those antibacterial wipes to apply it and then to rub it off. And then I did apply, I was planning to stencil on the top of this. So when it was dry, I just used a little clear wax over the top of it. And that tends to help. I hope I have enough on here. We might do a little more. That does tend to help with um, when you're stenciling on wood or stained wood or painted wood. Because sometimes the wood can take whatever medium you're using and pull it in and spread it out through the different fibers and make your stencil image look kind of fuzzy, just exactly the same way as fabric does. So let's, I think let's go ahead and do that. I'm just using some uh, clear natural beeswax that I have from various, um, you could use Minwax, you could absolutely use whatever you have handy. And I'm just going to put a teeny bit of my wax on a paper towel. And I know that my stencil is going to go mainly to this side, so I'm just going to put a teeny bit more. I'm just rubbing it into my wood. And then using the other side of my paper towel, I'm wiping any excess off. Okay, and we're not going to be waiting to do anything to it. it. It will be good to go immediately. Okay, so with this one, we're also using that same cross, that same pine cross from Dollar Tree. And I, oops, I, um, it looks cruddy on the back, but that does not matter. I could not get that tag off. So I said, oh, well, I don't care. So I stained it, and then you guys, I took my favorite stencil from uh, Magnolia. I'll grab it and show you in just a second. My mandala lace stencil and a little white chalk paste. And I just, it's right here. This is my super cruddy, very, very well loved 
mandala lace stencil. Look how awful that looks. I'm still using it because it's still working and um, it's probably been used at this point about 50 times. I'm not even kidding. It's stained and it looks awful, but it still works right. So what I did was I just laid, this out of the way. I just laid my cross down and I put my mandala lace stencil on top of it. And then I just used a squeegee. Uh, squeegees. And a little white chalk paste. And I just pushed the chalk paste through the holes, not on the very top round center part of this, but on the sides, on the top and bottom and the two sides of this cross. And it's not especially straight or anything, but I don't think that matters at all. Okay, let me set this over here. All right, so this is what we have now. And we just added a little more wax to this stained piece of this little $5 wood sign from Target. And now we're gonna use this stencil that says family where life begins and love never ends. Uh, we're just gonna use the word family though, because we don't really have room for the other words. So, and that's one of the great things about using these stencils is that you can use whatever bits and pieces work for you. You don't have to use always the whole entire thing. So I'm going to, I am going to fuzz the stencil because there's a green one and the green ones are very sticky. And it's going to be going on wood. So I'm just going to pull it off of the backing. Lay it on my little fuzzing cloth, which you can get these green fuzzing cloths also from Magnolia. Uh, the gray side is for patting your stencils dry after you've washed them. These are great and they're not expensive at all. So I'm going to do this three times. That is fuzzing, and it's F-U-Z-Z-I-N-G. It's just making your green stencils slightly less sticky, okay? And now, I know I want this cross to sort of be kind of off to the side here, so I, and I also know that my stencil is going to fall off the edges. Um, I'm just fiddling around to figure out where do I want it to fall off the edges. Okay, and I'll pick this up and show it to you close up. So you can see it's it's going to sort of be blank here in the center where these two pieces of wood are apart. And then it's going to fall off the edge on the top and the bottom. And I think that'll be just fine. Okay, so I'm just pressing it down to make sure I've got everything on there good. And we're gonna use white chalk paste. And in case you're joining us late, we're using stencils and chalk paste and squeegees and a fuzzing cloth, all from Magnolia. And I did pin a link down here at the bottom of the page if you want to go look at anything. And then we're using leftovers, some leftover wood, uh, the inside of a stretch canvas, this leftover wood sign, some leftover wood um, crosses that I had from Dollar Tree, a piece of leftover a painter's drop cloth, and we're making a project out of leftovers. So I think that's kind of fun to just use what you have, and uh, you just never know what you can come up with. I had no idea what this project was going to be when I was getting started. And I think it's fun when you have everything so super planned out, then sometimes you're disappointed in your results. Uh, when you don't have everything super planned, then you, it can be a nice surprise how your projects turn out. And you don't have any uh, expectations, you know? 
Okay, so I don't want to do the smaller words down here. I'm going to try not to get those. I'm just putting the chalk paste on my little squeegee and then pushing it through the holes on my stencil and then I'm picking up the big blobs. And we did, I did use a clear wax. You could also use a clear spray sealer before I'm doing my stenciling on this wood. And that will hopefully make it so that we have a nice, crisp uh, stencil impression. Okay. So this is what I have so far. And I'm just going to pull it up and peek a little bit. It looks great. It looks really great. And you can tell that it's family. Oops, I did make a little... Uh-oh, over here to the side, so I'll show you what we're going to do. Okay, I need a towel. Okay, I don't know how I did this, but I did sort of go outside of the bounds here, right here. So I'm just going to take one of my little wipes. And see if I can just pull that right off while it's still wet. Yep. And I don't think I'll be able to tell that that happened at all. So. Here's the start of the sign. It says family. And then my idea was to add this cross to it. Let's see, how can I hold on to this? What do you guys think? Pretty cute, huh? For all being leftovers, things that I wasn't currently using, I just had in my stash. And now looking at this, I'm kind of thinking that we need to do something right here in the center of our cross. So after I'm done here, I'll come back and I'll try to add a little more white chalk to it. And then I will finish this off and take pictures. And um, yeah, that was pretty much it. My two real quick leftover neutral faith-inspired type projects. So um, I hope you like this idea of just using what you have on hand to come up with some type of original craft. And I hope that you will try one of these using your colors, your style, you know, the ideas that would fit good with your decor and your lifestyle. Or if you're making it as a gift uh, with the recipients you know, their colors and, and the kind of style that they like. Um, so if you would like to take a peek at anything, I did pin a link down below. Um, I'm going to finish this off off camera, both of these. I'll get pictures, put them here in the comments. I'll also put them on DIY Dreaming. If you have questions or you want a specific link or you want to know, um, I had somebody just asking me recently where to get, where to find a certain video that I did maybe six months ago. If there's something specific you're letting, you're wanting to know about, let me know that in the comments too, because I can just hop over to my YouTube page and grab a link to those videos. It takes me no time at all, and I'm totally happy to do that, and I can get you um, that kind of information if if you would like. So thanks so much for joining me. I could possibly be live again today, I'm not for sure, but I do have some really fun crafts coming up this week. So, if you haven't already liked and followed DIY Dreaming, go up and take a peek and see. If you want to make sure that you're served my content, um, imagine a waitress coming around with a big pile of pancakes 
if you know for sure that you're going to want some pancakes, and my content is the pancakes in this scenario, then um, interact with me on these videos, either by doing a little thumbs up, doing a little heart, saying something in the comments. It could be a real statement, or you could say abracadabra, or gobbledygook, or, you know, it doesn't even have to <laughs> be real. But when Facebook sees that, they say, ah, this person wants pancakes next time Heidi makes pancakes and serves pancakes. So, um, so interact with me if you'd like to have pancakes the next time I'm live, um, or to see pictures of my upcoming pancake projects. That's so silly. Um, and feel free to sprinkle and yeah, thank you for joining me. I will see you guys later. Have a great rest of your day.